I will never ever forget the feeling I felt as I saw the sea and set foot on the boat for the first time. And to that four-year-old kid, it was the greatest sense of freedom that I could ever imagine. I just felt, you know, from that age, I would absolutely love one day somehow to sail around the world. When you set off on those journeys, you know, you take with you everything you need for your survival. What you have is all you have. You have to manage what you have down to the last drop of diesel, the last packet of food. It's absolutely essential, else you won't make it. And I suddenly realised, but why is our world any different? You know, we have finite resources available to us once in the history of humanity. You know, metals, plastics, fertilisers. We're digging all this stuff out of the ground and we're using it up. How can that work in the long term? Surely there was a different way we could use resources globally that used them and not used them up. That was the question I had in my head and it took me a long time to get to a place where I realised actually there is a different way the economy can run, there is a different way we can use stuff, use materials, and that would be the circular economy. The way the economy functions predominantly today is it's very extractive, it's linear. You know, we take something out of the ground, we make something out of it, and at the end of the life of that product, we throw it away. No matter how efficient you are with the materials you feed into that system, even if you make that product using a little bit less energy and a little bit less material, you're still going to run out in the end. If you turn that on its head and look at a circular model, whereby when you design a product, you take a material out of the ground, or you take recycled material, ideally, you feed that into the product, but you design the product so you can get all the materials back out again, by design, from the outset. You design out waste and pollution, because why would you ever create either in a world with finite resources? It's about the design brief. Today, if you buy a washing machine, you pay tax when you buy it, you own all the materials within it, and then when it breaks, as they inevitably do, you pay tax again, landfill tax. Within a circular system, all that changes. You wouldn't own your machine, you'd pay per wash. It would be looked after by the manufacturer of the machine, and they would make sure that once that machine comes to the end of its life, they take it in, they know what sits within it, and they can recover the materials from it. So you end up with a circular system by design, and we've studied at great length the numbers behind that, you know, the economics. And it's much cheaper. It's 12 cents, US cents, versus 27 cents per wash to have that circular machine we would live within a system that works. We would not be producing waste. We would have a better service. We would have better access to technology. And from all the studies we've done, because those manufacturers aren't buying all the materials, selling them on, um, we would get a better price because they would be guaranteed their flow of materials going back into the system. I'm hugely optimistic because you know, when you look at the numbers, when you look at the economics behind this, it makes sense to switch to a circular economy. There's more value in a circular economy than a linear economy. There's absolutely a cost in the transition for a big organisation. But maybe you need to ask yourself another question, what's the risk in linear? Because to me that's a no-brainer. There's a big risk in linear. It simply cannot be the future based on pure economics. So actually, where do you put your time? Where do you put your effort? Let's work out what circular really looks like and try and paint that circular tapestry as best as we possibly can. Mm -hmm.